things are better, better left unknown. And I'll never find you here, cause no one's ever, no one's ever Rabbit Hole is a community-driven radio. At times the community comments may reveal prejudices and other beliefs that we or our sponsors do not condone. Views or opinions expressed by the community, callers, or guests, are those of the individual speaking and do not represent the views or opinions of this site. Rippin' Common Sense content is intended for mature audiences only. Enjoy! Multiverse Broadcasting System Initiated Hello Lasers Lasers Multiverse Connection Established Lasers Hello. Multiverse connection secure. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. This is my life DIY and Hi, this is Jojo. Hi, my name is Oz. Hey everybody, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. This is Cynthia Sue Larson. This is your man Meta, aka Propagate This Light. And you're now listening to Dark Wolf's Din. The Dark Wolf's Den Show on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. 
Are ghosts real? We had a thousand hours of continuous communication with the spirit world. Does time travel actually exist? The laws of physics seem to be compatible with time machines. You know, sometimes I wonder about reincarnation, don't you? A four-year-old boy in Adelaide, Australia, has told his parents that he used to be Britain's Prince Diana. What would happen if the world found out that aliens were real? I didn't say disclosure would be easy, but what is the alternative? To establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. We have so many questions and yet so little time, so to have you here, the pleasure is all mine. Coming to you from a secret mountain cave, hidden deep within the Idaho wilderness, this is the Dark Wolf's Den Show. Now, here is your host, Jerry Hicks. That's right, I am Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf, and we are broadcasting live across the multiverse from a secret cave, hidden high up in the beautifully snow-covered peaks of the Idaho mountains, that's right. We're ripping through the electromagnetic soup, tearing through the atmosphere, and tunneling away into your radio like a quantum particle. This is the Dark Wolf's Den Show for Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to carry on our State of Mystery series. We're going to jump from the great state of Arizona up a little northeast to the state of Arkansas. That's right, there's a lot of paranormal stories from cryptids to ghosts, UFOs, and more. Coming to a radio near you tonight, June 30th, 2021, on the Dark Wolf Stin Radio Show. But first, today in history. That's right. You guys have heard us more than once on this show reference the Tunguska event. Well, today is the 113th anniversary of that event. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. On this day in 1908, a giant fireball, most likely caused by an airburst of a large meteoroid or comet, though that is still up for debate, flattens 80 million trees near the stony Tunguska River in Yenisek Governorate, Russia, and the largest impact event in recorded history. Once again, that is the Tunguska event, and that was on this day in 1908. And that is today's Today in History. Still one of the most mysterious impact events in all of recorded history, too, because like it said, it is thought that it's a meteoroid or comet, but even that is still up for debate. But perhaps it was just a great big, you know, plump comet, right? Speaking of plump, that actually takes us into our quote of the day. Say what? And our quote tonight says, and I quote, I was the fattest baby in Clark County, Arkansas. They put me in the newspaper. It was like a prize turnip. End quote. (laughs) And that, ladies and gentlemen, comes to us from actor Billy Bob Thornton. Uh Uh-huh. Say what? And I did not know that Billy Bob Thornton was from Arkansas. I just learned something new, ladies and gentlemen. When I think of Arkansas, I think of the Clintons, right? And the dirty crime family. But they're not the only monsters in Arkansas. Arkansas actually has a couple different monsters besides the human ones, like the legend of Boggy Creek, also known as the Falk Monster. Perhaps one of the most famous of the Sasquatch cryptids has enthralled the citizens of Falk, Arkansas since the 1900s, although the earliest sightings supposedly dated way back to 1834. They say that this hairy hominid stands between 7 and 8 feet tall on 2 feet, and it weighs close to 300 pounds. Its chest, legs, and arms are covered with thick, long hair. Some accounts describe the monster as running very fast with a galloping gait and swinging its arms in a fashion similar to a monkey. Some says it has a terrible odor, being described as a combination of skunk and wet dog, 
That description reminds me a lot of the skunk ape from Florida. If you guys have ever heard of that case file, uh, that's one we'll dig into once we make it to the great state of Florida, of course. And also having red eyes about the size of silver dollars. Reports say that the monster was spotted more than 40 times in just 1997 alone. It had been suggested that the animal is nocturnal. A hunter reported seeing a sighting in broad daylight, though, in the Sulphur River Wildlife Area near Falcon 2000. The Boggy Creek Monster has been the subject of four different films at least, beginning with 1973's famous The Legend of Boggy Creek. The movie centered around Bobby Ford's supposed encounter with the beast, and it played in drive-in theaters around the country and introduced millions to the legend. For those who may not have had the chance to see that movie since, you know, 1971, it's only been out a couple few decades, but just in case you haven't had a chance to see it, here's a short synopsis just in case you're interested. The famous encounter that the film is based on occurred back in 1971. Bobby and his wife, Elizabeth Ford, claimed that the monster attacked their home late on the night of May 1st. The monster, Elizabeth said, reached through a screen window, but was chased away by Bobby and Dan, his brother, who had just returned from a hunting trip. Not to be satisfied, the monster returned shortly after midnight and tossed Bobby to the ground. Bobby was then taken to the St. Michael Hospital in Texarkana and treated for large gashes across his back. He was suffering from mild shock when he arrived, according to newspaper reports. Several newspapers had been covering the legend around that time. Not only did it make it into the newspapers, but there was actually a little bit of evidence left behind. A very intriguing piece of evidence, and if you guys have listened to this show any amount of time, uh, you've heard me talk about my encounters with some of these cryptids, uh, one of them very specifically. And uh, you'll know why this next part is very, very intriguing to me. Although no traces of blood were found at the Ford's home, three-toed footprints were found near the house. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, three-toed footprints. This is not the first time this has come up in the State Series, but it's definitely not the first time it has come up on this show because if you guys don't know, the Chupacabra, which I have had encounter with, has a three-toed footprint, one that I personally have seen with my own two eyes. Now, this footprint sounds like a Bigfoot version of this three-toed print, but just the same, three toes is not something that is known to be on any creature that we know of. Any creature as to the best of my knowledge, at least when I was searching for animal footprints, none of them have just three toes. That is a very, very rare situation in nature. And there were scratches on the porch and the siding, and a window were both damaged. So there was also physical damage to the house too, but I still can't get over the three-toed footprints. That is something that every time we find it, I just am absolutely mind-boggled. When reporter Jim Powell got the call, he was the first to report it. Although most of the more famous sightings occurred back during the 1900s, and, of course, the Ford case in 1971, sightings have continued to the present day. But before we get into the present, let's take a look at some of the past run-ins with the Sulphur River Bottom's Big Hairy Man. For those that think this may be a hoax, I would like you to count the number of years that these case files have been turned in, uh, and see if it is a hoax because if it's a hoax by one person this is the oldest living person i know of if it's by a family what's the point why would they do such a thing if that's just it just the the explanations i've heard for this are so ridiculous they almost make the case file seem more believable than the explanations given but uh when we go over this history just kind of keep in mind how many years we go across that hit these sightings have been occurring it all began in 1908 in Falk, Arkansas. 113 year difference, 1908 to 2021. So this started 113 years ago. One woman was reported to have seen a creature fitting the description of the Falk monster when she was 10 years old. Jumping forward to 1932, a Jonesville man saw what seemed to be the same monster scratching around his porch before it vanished into the woods. One further sighting was reported to Falk Sheriff's office in 1946, describing as walking like a man, but not a man. 
Jumping forward to 1955, Falcon Jonesville saw a cluster of new sightings, including two motorists who saw a hairy man-like creature flitting across the road near their home. Shortly after, the Victoria Advocate reported how one huntsman claimed to have gotten 15 shots off at a large ape-man close to nearby Boggy Creek, but apparently missed. The next bunch of sightings occurred in the mid-60s, largely among hunters. One typical description around the time had the creature at 7 foot tall, with reddish-brown hair about 4 inches long all over its body. It stood upright like a man, but had extra long arms. One particularly notable encounter from this time period was that of Carl Finch, the founder of the band Brave Combo, who saw a large hairy creature late one night while driving through the area with his cousin. What was an interesting personal anecdote only took on further significance after Finch saw The Legend of Boggy Creek several years later and realized he had seen, now, the famous beast firsthand. In 1965, in Falk, a teenage boy encountered a hairy man or ape-like beasts on near a lake on his family property. As the thing approached, he fired at it with a shotgun three times and then fled. This report came from one Smoky Crabtree, who we'll get into later. In 1969, in December, in Falk as well, a family of four was driving on Highway 71 north of Falk at night when they spotted what they thought was a man in a fur coat walking towards them on the opposite side of the road. It was cold and close to Christmas, so they decided to slow down and offer a ride. As they got closer, they realized it wasn't a man in a fur coat, but some kind of thing covered in hair. As they came upon it with the bright lights on, the thing stopped and raised its arm to shield the light from its eyes. The arm was thick, hairy, and muscular, according to the witnesses. Its body was covered in brown, shaggy hair with long hair over its face. The legs appeared to be, quote, caked in mud from the knees down. Scared, the family quickly sped off, wondering what they had just seen. Now, this location would have been close to the Ford property, and the date was prior to the public knowledge of the Falk monster sightings. Despite the many of early reports, it wasn't until the early 1970s that the beast lurking around the dark places of Falk started to make national headlines. So from 1908 to 1970, there was a slew of sightings of this creature, or these creatures, I would say. It's got to be more than one creature if it's this old, or maybe not. Maybe they just live a really long time. Either way, hoax is really one of those things that doesn't fit the explanation very well, as well as the fact that uh, it was is still seen to this day. 1997 had a large rash of outbreaks, as we heard earlier, and even into the 2000s, there are still reports of the Falk monster. So maybe you can find the Falk monster in Falk, Arkansas. And you know, perhaps you know they say Bigfoots uh, like this creature. Perhaps they're aliens, right? Perhaps Bigfoots may actually be aliens. That's a pretty popular theory. It's not to say it's not to be discounted, right? Look at uh, look at Star Wars. Chewbacca was an alien, and he had no problem getting around the galaxy. I mean, it's, it's not unheard of to think that there could be many different variety of creatures out there. Um, and we'll discuss the UFO UAP report tomorrow night. For those that have been wondering why I haven't covered that yet, that is coming, I guarantee you. Uh, and speaking of UFOs, Arkansas has its fair share of interesting UFO cases, too. Like this one here from 1639. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the first recorded UFO sighting in the United States began with a surprising observer, John Winthrop, the governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony. In 1639, he wrote a strange wrote of a strange encounter that several men had with a great light in the night sky, end quote. The light moved back and forth between the men for two to three hours as they rowed a boat up the muddy river. Other people reported seeing the same phenomena at the same time. The men also discovered when the light disappeared that they were much farther up the river than they realized and had no memory of arriving at that point. That the Puritans didn't have the word UFO. If they had, Governor Winthrop would surely have classified this as a UFO encounter. The term UFO, of course, standing for Unidentified Flying Object, we've later moved this to UAP. 
And that is one sighting in Arkansas, the first sighting in the uh, contiguous uh, United States, 48 states, is the uh, first UFO sighting in 1639 by Governor Winthrop, which I was unaware of. I, I've never heard of that one. So uh, there you go. Let's see what else we have here. I'm, I'm looking at an article, actually, of different ones. Uh, in 1987, witnesses in the Midwest claimed dozens of sightings of an aerial machine shaped like a cigar. This included sightings in Arkansas. Some children first reported seeing the object on April 17th, oh, 1897, not 1987. Apparently, my eyeballs are switching around numbers here. Uh, this uh, happened April 17th, 1897. They told their father, J.F. Floyd, who could only describe the object as, quote, a huge ball of fire traveling with fearful velocity, end quote. The sightings continued. The next report came from Mountain Railroad conductor Jim Hooten, who happened upon the airship while out hunting on April 20th. He claimed to hear a noise that sounded like a locomotive air pump. He found the airship and several men in a field and asked them if it was an airship. One replied that it was. Hoonan later made a sketch of the airship for the Gazette, which is really intriguing indeed. Um, it doesn't look like a UFO that I would think of unless they, they were trying to be symbolic. That's uh, that's an interesting looking airship for sure. Uh, it's got a lot of, looks like fans on the uh, side of it and fans around the back. It's like your classic airship almost you would see in like a cartoon. It's interesting. Uh, then 1897 Hot Springs on the evening of May 7th, 1897, Constable John J. Sumter and Deputy Sheriff John McLemore were riding horses outside of Hot Springs. They saw a bright light appear in the sky and decided to investigate. Then they followed the light and had to dismount, reporting that their horses refused to go any further. They followed the light on foot through a rainy evening and found a, quote, cigar-shaped vessel 60 feet long, end quote. Several men walked around the vessel, and one was retrieving water from a nearby creek. And I'm going to stop right there. That's not the first time, surprisingly enough, that I've heard of a UFO coming down and requesting water. So perhaps water isn't as abundant through the... Uh, universe or solar system as we might think or perhaps we've just got in abundance and we're just like a well like a water stop for the aliens right uh getting back to our story here uh one man approached the arkansans and said they were traveling around the country in the airship he even offered two men a ride uh, to get out of the rain the constable and sheriff replied that they preferred to get wet end quote the presence of an airship was never confirmed, though these sightings had the nation in the frenzy that year. Northwest Arkansas, 1965. The next famous UFO sighting in Arkansas came in 1965, when v Viney Grove resident Bill Estep reported seeing a light in the sky and a cylindrical object hovering in the air. His report was never confirmed, but it was, wasn't the only one that night. Other reports came in from Fayetteville of strange lights in the sky. Then on August 15th and 16th, 1966, it was Fort Smith's turn. Former Fort Smith resident Randy Feenster re recounted his experience seeing the UFO that night. The then 11 years old Feenster remembers people gathered in several locations watching the lights in the sky. He also remembered remembered a v-shaped object very high in the sky illuminated enough for him to clearly see the outline feenster later tried to track down the military flight records for august of 1996 but couldn't find any on file he believes what fort smith residents saw that night was likely a top secret military training exercise and that's not out of the question that is very, very well possible because uh, I was speaking with somebody where I live, and I live in a corridor that is right <clears throat> around the uh, Area 51 corridor, excuse me. Uh, they teach you you're supposed to hit the mute button when you got a cough, right? <laughs> Seems like I forgot to do that. And modern sightings, you know, modern sightings are a little harder to crack because... 
Uh, I've heard a lot of sightings in the UFO reporting center of the uh, train of lights going across the sky. And for those that don't know, that is most likely not a UFO. That is most likely satellites from our old friend, Mr. Elon Musk, putting up satellites in the Starlink program. So if you are in looking at the night sky and looking for something moving across the star field, and you suddenly see this chain, this, this string of lights moving against the star field, one right after the other in a line. That's probably not a UFO, ladies and gentlemen. That is most likely the Starlink satellite project moving across. So uh, we need to be careful and understand what we're looking at, right? We need to know what we're seeing. And in, Al in Arkansas, looks like they are seeing quite a bit. But uh, that's the uh, last the UFO files I have for Arkansas this evening. I didn't have a whole, whole lot that I could dig up on them unfortunately and we've only got just a couple minutes left so uh, i will say that i did read that ufo uap report while we're on this subject of ufos and we will be reading over that word for word tomorrow night make sure you guys come out tomorrow night uh thursday june for july 1st 2021 this is the last day of june isn't it happy end of june ladies and gentlemen uh coming up on the uh, heat of July, right? The heat of the summer, the heat of Independence Day coming up. Uh, and the UFO UAP report came out, and I was, I, I, <laughs> I'll give my comments later, but I was not surprised by what I seen in that report. And uh, once again, we will go over that word for word tomorrow night. And I can't wait to go over that with you guys because I think there's more coming. This doesn't seem. Uh, like like the information, like all the information they have. This seems more like a uh, preliminary outline of the information they had, but um, I don't want to get too deep into that tonight. I just wanted to mention uh, real quick that uh, that will be the topic tomorrow night. We will be going over that report. I'm sure there's a dozen YouTube channels, a hundred YouTube channels who have already beat me to it. We're a week late, uh, but we've let the dust settle down. And we've read through it ourselves, and now we're going to read through it together with you guys tomorrow night. Uh, also, if you would like to support us here at Riffin Common Sense Radio, we would very much appreciate any support you'd like to give us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, go over to RiffinRabbitHole.com. There's uh, different ways over there you can support us. Just hanging out on the site supports us. Just sharing us with a friend. You don't even have to. Well, I'm not even talking financial support. Just help us out by getting the word out. Let people know we exist. Share these shows on all your social media. Share these shows out with your friends. Show, uh, tell your friend uh, up the street about the Dark Wolf's Den show or the Riffin Rabbit Hole at theriffinrabbithole.com. Just, you know, help us get the word out. That helps support us more than any financial support could ever give us. That word of mouth, helping us get out to the community. That is the best support you guys could give us. So uh, if you feel so inclined to help us out and you enjoy what we do here and uh, you come back listening week after week, uh, let your friends know, let your radio stations know that you want to hear Rip and Common Sense Radio on your regular radio stations if you haven't already. Uh, a lot of you guys aren't uh, listening to us on regular FM AM. A lot of you are listening to us on YouTube or uh, even over on the RipandRabbitHole.com. Uh, either way, whether you're on the regular airwaves or the internet waves or the YouTube waves, let your local radio station know you want to hear Dark Wolf's Den Show and the Rip and Common Sense uh, radio network and the Riffin Rabbit Hole live show. Let them know you're interested in, in getting us on in your area and that you want to hear the uh, hear us on your radio and your, you think your city and your area would like to hear and enjoy what we are doing. Let your local radio station know that you want to hear us. You want to hear the Riffin Common Sense Radio Network team, AJ the Riffin Rabbit and Jerry the Dark Wolf Hicks. And the Dark Wolf's Den Show and the Rippin' Rabbit Hole Live Show. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you uh, also hop on over to the RippinRabbitHole.com after the show and hang out with us. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go ahead and take a network break right here. So uh, you guys sit back, relax, and we'll be right back after these messages. Don't you touch that dial. That's we right. got to stoke the fires and run off the men in black. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. 
That howl means your holiday weekend has begun. Your holiday weekend has begun. Hi, everyone. It's AJ, the Rippin' Rabbit. Are you enjoying tonight's Dark Wolf's Den radio show hosted by Jerry Hicks? I know I am. If you are and you haven't done so already, please make sure to thumb up that video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. You'll get our notifications every time we go live. We're here every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights, bringing you the very best of common sense radio, the Rip and Rabbit Hole. Jerry Hicks and the Dark Wolf's Den Radio Show will return again tomorrow night, Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Can you believe it? it starts at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. Step into the den and howl with him a long review of the official UFO UAP report, a subject we've been speaking about over the course of the last month as June has now officially ended after tonight, and we're going to listen to the review on the official UFO and UAP report tomorrow night, Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Then Friday night, I'll return July 2nd with a look at red, white, and blue. Come along with me and enjoy a journey of holiday proportions of red, white, and blue. We'll follow it up Saturday night, July 3rd, with stars and stripes. That's right. We're going to be celebrating our independence all weekend long. And of course, the big event, the 4th of July, boom booms everywhere as the most interactive family game show on radio returns to the airwaves with an all new name. We're going to tell you more about that on Friday night, but you'll have to join us Sunday, July 4th, as we end out the holiday weekend together with you. Like I said, there is a vote going on right now, and on the 4th of July, the show previously known as the all-new Fantastic Fun Show will receive a new name, and it will explode upon us on the 4th of July. Fitting, we're going to light fuse and get away as the most intense, interactive family game night will continue, as it does always the first Sunday of every month right here on the very best of Common Sense Radio, The Rip and Rabbit Hole. We'll return back to tonight's series, State of Mystery, tonight's look at Arkansas. That's what I call it. Arkansas for Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. You're listening to the Rippin' Common Sense Radio Network. Now back to Jerry Hicks and the Dark Wolf's Den Radio Show. Reestablishing Multiverse Connection. Connection re-established and secure. This is My Life DIY and... Hi, this is Jojo. Hi, my name is Oz. Hey everybody, it's AJ the Rippin' Rabbit. This is Cynthia Sue Larson. This is your man Meta, aka Propagate This Light. And you're now listening to Dark Wolf's Den. The Dark Wolf's Den Show on Rippin' Common Sense Radio. If you were meant to be controlled, you would have come with a remote, but you didn't. And that's why you listen to the Dark Wolf's Den Show. Now, here is your host, Jerry Hicks. That's right, I am Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf. And welcome back to the second half of the Dark Wolf's Den Show, exclusively on Rippin' Common Sense Radio Network, the Rippin' Rabbit Hole. So whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. If you're just tuning in tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the state of mystery 
of Arkansas. That's right. We've covered the Falk Monster. We've covered a series of UFO cases, including the first UFO sighting in all of the contiguous 48 states, all the way back in 1639. That's right. And now we're going to switch gears from cryptids and aliens and UFOs into the ghosts and the uh, crazy spook lights of Arkansas. That's right. We've got an interesting story here tonight. You know, each state has its uh, really interesting things we've found. It's uh, its own little intriguing special paranormal case, and this state is none the different. It's got one case called the Gurdon Spook Light. Check this out. The Gurdon Light has been spotted along a four-mile stretch of Missouri Pacific Railroad track about two and a half miles east of Highway 67. Accessing it requires hiking through a swamp past two trestles and an old cemetery. The light is a white blue color though sometimes it appeared to be more orange about 18 inches wide and a foot tall and shaped like a rugby ball. It sways back and forth as it moves along the horizon about one to three feet above the tracks. It occasionally been known to turn around at one end of the tracks and reappear at the other. And I can tell you as we go along our series, this will not be the first spook light that we come across on the railroad tracks. Uh, I have been looking ahead a little bit. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, major shout out to Kasha BG YouTube channel. That's K-A-S-H-A space the letter B and the letter G. Uh, this is not a paid promotion by any means. It's just the person who we're listening to now. And huge shout out for putting this information out. Kasha BG YouTube channel if you are interested in checking her out. According to the legend, the light comes from a lantern that is carried by a ghost railroad worker. This is consistent with the way the light moves, as well as the fact that the area in question is used by railways. The legend is based on a historically accurate account of a murder committed by a railroad worker named Lewis McBride. In 1931, a Missouri Pacific Railroad foreman named William McCain was beaten to death by a railroad spike after he fired McBride. Details vary, with some sources saying McBride killed McCain because he refused to give him more working hours. While others say that McBride was fired for sabotaging a section of the railroad track, causing a derailment. According to a 1932 article in the Southern Standard paper, McBride himself claimed that he killed McCain because McCain had accused him of causing the train accident a few days earlier. McBride received a death penalty and was executed by electrocution on July 8th of 1932. The first documented sighting of Gordon Light occurred just shortly after the murder. According to the legend, McCain continues to haunt the railroad tracks. And the light is caused by his lantern, which he would have carried for work. Another legend claims that while the light is carried by a ghost railroad worker, it is not McCain. Instead, it's the ghost of a railroad worker that accidentally fell into the tracks and got decapitated by an oncoming train. The legend claims that the head was never found and that his ghost walks around with the lantern looking for his head. I don't know how he's trying to look for his head if he doesn't have eyes to see, However, that's the legend. There is no historical data to back up this legend. However, it was not uncommon for railroad workers to get decapitated in the line of duty. Railroad work is a pretty dangerous job, and especially at that time in history, it was an incredibly dangerous job. That They didn't have the uh, safety equipment and, and measures that we've taken in today's society. Uh, but... There's an interesting theory as to what is causing this ghost light. And uh, what you hear the theory, I explain to you why I don't think this is what's going on at all. Many tried to explain the light. Unsolved Mysteries also did a story on the Gordon light, but failed to come up with any explanation to uncover the source of it. The prevailing theory is that the light is caused by the piezoelectric effect. According to this theory, the New Madrid Fault puts pressure 
on the underground quartz crystals, causing them to release charged particles, which are held together by the metal from the railroad tracks. However, this theory has not been scientifically proven. And I have to say, this isn't the wildest theory I've heard. It actually makes a lot of sense, except for the fact that, once again, we're going to find as we go through different states that this occurrence happens in places that the piezoelectric effect is not possible. Uh, because there's no crystals in the area to cause said effect, at least not to any degree that would uh, be noticeable in the environment. So uh, that's why I don't think that it's the piezoelectric effect. But even though this one has a uh, explanation put forward, the next stories we have aren't so easy to explain. Henderson University. Henderson University in Arkadelphia was founded in 1890 as the Arkadelphia Methodist College, later changing its name in 1975. In its earlier days, a boy from the school fell in love with a girl from a rival school. Bullying, harassment, and peer pressure led to him splitting up with the girl. When she showed up to homecoming to find him, she found him with another girl, and, heartbroken, killed herself. Her spirit is seen at least once a year, a menacing black figure usually turning up at the homecoming dance, forever searching for the girl who stole her love. That's one thing I've always disliked about case files with ghosts is they're so tragic. They've always got such a tragic, traumatic story behind them, which maybe that's what's required for a ghost to be be created, for the spirit to be stuck here. That I don't know, but it's always quite a tragic story, isn't it? And uh, we have switched, of course, from Kasha BG. Again, huge shout out over there to Kasha. We appreciate her doing that work. Uh, over to the Speakeasy is the name of this YouTube channel we are now listening to. Conway Cemetery. Conway Cemetery is located in a park of the same name in the town of Bradley, with the earliest recorded burial being in 1845. It was named after James S. Conway, Arkansas's first elected governor, and is also the final resting place for several families that dominated early Arkansas politics. Many have reported shadowy figures, disembodied voices, disembodied baby cries, and the feeling of being unwelcomed while exploring these spooky grounds after dark. Maybe that's the curse of the politicians, right? They do so much dirt in their life that they're stuck to roam the graveyard in, in a dark, decrepit form, maybe. I, I don't know, just theorizing. The Old State House Construction on the old state house in Little Rock started in 1833 and took nearly a decade to complete. Multiple deaths occurred on the premises, including a man who died in a knife fight and several Civil War soldiers from when Union troops occupied the building during the Brooks-Baxter affair. Many have reported lights turning on and off on their own. And as we know, spirits have an odd sort of way of affecting electronics somehow. Otherworldly sounds, the feeling of someone else in the room, and the ghost of a man seen wandering the area with a sad look on his face. He is often seen around the canon Lady Baxter, which still sits on the front lawn. In each one of these case files so far, I've noticed that it says that multiple people have made these reports, not just one. And again, with most all paranormal, you have to keep in mind, yes, there are people that make stuff up. There are people that file false reports. But when you start getting a number of reports that seem pretty sincere, that have the exact same or almost the same uh, details in them enough to say that they're matching and these people don't know each other and clearly have not colluded together then you have to step back and wonder why are there all these details across all these case files right that's one premise I've worked on this whole show uh, the last years year and year plus now uh, is the fact that when we look at case files, we must keep in mind these case files are coming from all different type of individuals from all walks of life, and they're all giving us the same details. And these ghost case files are classic details of of ghost hauntings, the disembodied voices, the electronic uh, uh, interference, the uh, lights turning on and off, for instance, uh, the the different uh, apparitions that are seen. Just there, there's so many pieces over and over and over that we find in these case files that we have to uh, take them as as real after after enough. I mean, how many grains of sand does it take to make a beach, right? Pea Ridge National Military Park. 
Before we get into this case file, I would like to note that I used to live very close to Fort Donaldson National Park, and there were many, many reports of ghostly activity that would come out of that area from a multitude of peoples. Pea Ridge National Military Park in Garfield opened in 1956 and is named after the Battle of Pea Ridge, which was fought in 1862. It was a Union victory, but both sides suffered heavily with more than 3,000 combined casualties. Many have investigated this park, and several have reported the ghostly sounds of gunfire, cannons, drums, disembodied voices, and other sounds of war when the area is completely empty. Those are the same reports that I got out of Fort Donaldson over and over and over. The sounds of war, the sounds of cannon, the sounds of uh, soldiers marching, different elements that shouldn't have been in the environment, yet there was. Uh, kind of like the stone tape theory we've discussed over and over uh, on this show m many, many times. And the idea that for some reason the actions, whether they be so traumatic or whatever the case may have been, were locked into the environment and replay themselves over and over. Also reported are full-bodied apparitions of soldiers in old-timey garb that have even done so much as given directions to lost visitors, who turn around briefly to find that their ghostly tour guide has vanished. Every now and then you hear a good case file that gives you the chills, and this case file does just that. And I've said for years living in the South, which I don't live in the South anymore, of course, as you guys know, I live way up here in the Idaho Mountains, but uh, I lived in Tennessee for a good 29 plus years. And one thing I know about living in the South is the Civil War covered a large area, and I'm surprised that the entire area of the South of the United States isn't haunted. Uh, my particular house I grew up in was haunted, although it was the first house on that property. Not to say it was the first soul on that property, just the first house on that property, right? So there's no telling what has happened over the years on these lands. And with the Civil War, once again, in any area that a war occurs, I'm surprised that every inch of the land isn't absolutely haunted to the gills. Keller's Chapel Cemetery the earliest burial in Keller's Chapel Cemetery was recorded in 1859 when J.W. Keller passed and was buried here. A large portion of the cemetery is comprised of the graves of veterans from several early wars, as well as a number of children. Researchers and visitors to the cemetery report the disembodied sounds of infants crying, violent noises coming from the empty chapel, and several animal carcasses on wooden crosses have been found throughout the years. This sounds like one of the creepiest cemeteries I have ever heard of. A ghostly red light has been sighted floating through the trees, and it's said that if you park at the front gate and turn your engine off, a mysterious force will keep it from restarting, leaving you stranded for hours. So if you find yourself in Arkansas and you decide to go visit Chapel Hill Cemetery, remember, do not turn your engine off, no matter what you do, right? The Arlington Hotel. The Arlington Hotel in Hot Springs National Park was originally built in 1875 and has been rebuilt twice over the years. Stories have sprouted up from staff and visitors alike, detailing bottles of wine flying from shelves, faucets turning on and off by themselves, and extreme cold spots. These occurrences are believed to be caused by one of the numerous apparitions cited here, including a man in a dark suit that appears in bedrooms and in the laundry room, a little girl in a pink dress, and the spirit of a bellman still clad in garb from the early 1900s. He has been known to greet visitors and even hold full-length conversations with the living. The most dedicated hotel worker of all time, ladies and gentlemen. He even works from the afterlife. But what do you guys think? Do you think Arkansas is a state of mystery with the cryptids and the aliens and the many ghost stories that they've given us this evening? Or, once again, do you think we're barking up the wrong tree? In the end, ladies and gentlemen, all you can do is listen to the case files, apply a little common sense, and you be the judge. We got to close it out. That's right, that's it for this episode of the Dark Wolf's Den Show for Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. Uh, so whether you're on the edge of reality, the edge of the galaxy, or the edge of your seat, we're glad you chose us to be right there with you. 
ladies and gentlemen, the den may be closing, but don't you worry. The weekend fun has only just begun. That's right. I will be back tomorrow, Thursday, July 1st, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, as we go over the UFO UAP report released last week. It's an interesting read and uh, something that I hope you guys tune in for. We're going to do a full review of all the information they released, all nine pages. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Then on Friday, July 2nd, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, AJ the Riffin' Rabbit comes back to the airwaves with an all-new episode of the Riffin' Rabbit Hole live show. Of course, all shows here on the network start at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, and the shows that AJ is about to do this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, may be the most important shows we will ever do on this network. On Friday, July 2nd, 2021, he's going to be talking about the red, the white, and the blue. What does it mean to be an American, ladies and gentlemen? Independence comes with a price, and a price that's steady, steady and high, but a price that's worth it indeed. Red, white, and blue, what does it mean to you, ladies and gentlemen? Then on Saturday, July 3rd, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central, the Stars and Stripes. If we're going to talk about the red, white, and blue, we definitely need to reference the Stars and the Stripes. Once again, the flag has such a deep, deep meaning in this country. And this is an episode you guys, once again, do not want to miss. Uh, there will be some special announcements and information coming this weekend on the Rippin' Rabbit Hole Live Show. Do make sure you tune in for that. Then on Sunday, July 4th, 2021, Independence Day here in the U.S. of A. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. AJ the Rippin' Rabbit's going to be back with a fantastic fun show, uh, which is looking for a new name. As a matter of fact, if you want to vote for the new name for the Fantastic Fun Show, head on over to the RiffinRabbitHole.com. That is R I P O N R A B B I T H O L E dot com. Over there, you're going to be able to vote for your favorite name, new name for the Fantastic Fun Show. That's right. It's going to have a new name next month, and that name is going to be decided by you, the contestant and viewer of the Fantastic Fun Show. That's right. So head on over there and cast your vote. I know I already have, but I'm not going to tell you what I chose. Then on Tuesday, July 6th, the weekend kicks off next week early with Champion Sports Nation's Tuesday night videos. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be covering, I'm sure, a very patriotic theme. There's no doubt about that. And make sure you guys come by. That's a very, very fun trivia game that happens uh, with video, music videos. And uh, it's just, it's lots and lots of fun. There's lots of players. Sandy B won it last month. Congratulations to champion Sandy B. And Earth Daughter won it the month before that. I'm seeing a female trend here, guys. So maybe we can get a guy to win this round. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That is in the 24-7 Backstage Lounge on Tuesday, July 6, 2021, 7 p.m. Pacific. 10, 9 Central. This is not an aired radio show. This is a RippinRabbitHole.com exclusive interactive fun Tuesday night video show hosted by our buddy and admin, admin over there in the chat, Champion Sports Nation, as I'm sure he'll be putting more information to that show here right now. While you're on the RiffinRabbitHole.com, ladies and gentlemen, also make sure to drop down the rabbit hole. That's right. That is our exclusive social media site, and we'd love to see you over there. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to get out of here. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure to hang out with you guys tonight. If you would like to help support us here at Riffin' Common Sense Radio, there's a number of ways to do it. As I said earlier in the show, the best way to support us is to just tell everybody that we exist. Share out our links. Let the world know that the Riffin' Rabbit Hole is here. And we're bringing this to you every week, five times a week. Wednesday through Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10, 9 Central. If you would like to financially support us, that is also an option. If you go to the Dark Wolf's Din Show YouTube page in the details, we have addresses for cryptocurrency as well as PayPal and Patreon over there. And if you'd like to support the RiffinRabbitHole.com, make sure you check out the Riffin Rabbit Hole YouTube as well as the RiffinRabbitHole.com. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, We've got to get out of here. On behalf of AJ the Rippin' Rabbit, Chick Mandela Effect, Walt House, Michael Musco, Mr. Tom Bayless from Red Shed Studios. Get down with it, Tom. If you're looking for a custom soundtrack for your next project... 
make sure you check out Red Shed Studios, Tom Bayless, as he's done an amazing job with the music we have here, and he does amazing prices. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all these folks and everybody involved in ripping Common Sense Radios, my name is Jerry Hicks, also known as the Dark Wolf. And remember, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay awake, but dare to dream. Good night, everybody. How? Yeah, that's right. Just illusion I'm lost in a world